so many witnesses, so many heroes out of this. Joining me live is witness Huma Hussaini, uh, who was there during this attack. Thank you very much for your time. I know it was a distressing Thank night. You. I'm sure it's, you know, it probably almost doesn't feel real today. Talk us through when you first realised something like this, something was happening in this shopping centre. Um, good afternoon. Um, yes, um, I was there yesterday at Bondi Junction around 3.15. And I was shopping there inside Lululemon shop. And I was in the counter while I was paying and I heard screaming outside the door. And I just turned my face and went a few steps further to look what's going on. As soon as I looked outside, so I straight away saw the guy who was uh, wearing this jersey outfit, green and yellow with a short and t-shirt, um, with, you know, handing... Um, a very large knife. Um, I was just uh, scared and traumatized at that time. And also, um, while I was looking at him, I was looking at the floor and I've seen like two um, bodies on the floor right in front of, one of the body was right in front of the um, cotton on shop. And there was a lot, a lot of blood around that body. And also a few meters after that body, there was another body as well, uh, which I was really, really like, you know, scared. And I was in shock, absolutely. Yeah. And then the door of that shop was open. That's why we were like, you know, more scared. As soon as I looked at the guys at that time, and the guy was right in front of the mirror with the knife on hand, and he was just like when he, someone is U-turning, he was just turning back as if like he's coming inside the Lulu lemon shop. And I, I screamed and I'm like, no, please. And I was looking for a, a change room just to go inside and hide myself while the change rooms were already full, were full of customers. Because for some reason yesterday afternoon, um, Bondi Junction Shopping Center was pretty busy as well. Yeah, well, that, that's what we've heard that this was a, you know, it's always pretty busy on a Saturday, but it's a really busy day. What you described there, you, you saw him, you what? You, you almost locked eyes and screamed. He then, yes, he then I ran was on, did you? What, what, what happened next? You I was have, running yeah, like, on, to, you know, I was running to find like a change room. When I looked at the change room area and it was full of like, you know, around 30 to 40 people. So I, I, I saw a mirror, I thought it's a door and I'm trying to go there and there wasn't a door. And then I just squeezed myself to the waiting area of the lemon, um, Lily Lemon um, shop, the change room. Um, honestly, like I'm still in shock. And last night while I was sleeping, I could not even sleep properly. And I was dreaming the whole night. And I was picturing that guy as well, like in my dream. Yeah. And after like I saw the guy, there was a few gunshots as well, about four to five. And that even scared me the most. I thought, like, you know, this attacker, maybe they're a mm. gang. They're, ever, like, you know, maybe a few people as well. The rest of them, may, maybe they've got um, a gun on hand. And then one of the girls from Lululemon, she came and said, guys, please do not get panicked. That gunshot was from the police. Yeah. And then okay. we feel uh, so much better. Yeah, well, no, no one would have known, would they? That That's the first Thing that people turn their minds to is this a coordinated attack could it be um some form of terror and like that's been a natural um you know place for minds to go just describing that moment afterwards did did he just turn around and move on did he walk off he, he obviously he Look, didn't when i was the looking at the him end. when i was looking at him and i straight away saw him with a knife on hand and he was right in front of Meyer, and he was about to like you know turn face to come back to Lulu Lemon shop. And that case, I screamed, I'm like, no, 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 please. And then the police arrived. Um, yeah, this is, the situation uh, got so much better. So gunshots came just after that time, did they? After that time, yeah. The gunshot That's, was pretty uh, loud as well. That scared me. That was the first time I heard a gunshot. So the, the, what we've heard a lot is that police officer coming in by herself would have saved lives. It yeah, sounds was... like for you, it, it arrived. It arrived just in time for you and the other people in Lululemon. Yeah, yeah, they did. The police arrived on time and they shuttered that door. While the door was shuttered, all of us we felt so much better, like safer. At least you know the door mm. is locked now.
as soon as the door locked, we just went closer to the door and we saw the dead body and the police, the securities, everyone was there. And we were locked inside the Lululemon shop for about 45 minutes. There was about like maybe 40, 40 people or 35 people like inside the yeah. area of the Lululemon uh, wedding room. And like, I know it was, you know, pretty small like place, but we all squeezed each other there just to be safe. After when, 45 minutes- When you got minutes, out eventually, yeah. was, it, was, was it police who came and got you? Because I imagine you would have been, people would have, even if you're told it's okay to go, you'd, th you'd, you'd struggle no. to have the confidence to leave given no. what you'd we seen. We were not and, allowed. As you say, bodies outside. We were not allowed to go out until the police got us out from there. We okay. were there. 45 minutes and then the police came like guys now we are getting you out one by one because lulu lemon shop was full of customers full on i've got videos with me um yes the police uh, got us out from there and we went outside the street and i was waiting for like around 9 p.m to get my car from the car park but unfortunately i couldn't get my car and I was out, like, uh, I was going to catch Uber. And while I was booking Uber, <clears throat> unfortunately, the cost was more than $100. So I preferred to go home by train. And I reached home around yeah, 9.30, very in shock. It, I know a lot of people st stuck wanting to get their cars back. Look, it's far from the biggest thing in this story. But, you know, once again, the Uber, um, s the surge charge is, is something that a yeah, lot of people question. Charge, yeah, the surge charge, yeah. Just, just finally on this, how, how are you feeling today? I'm sure there's help out there and you're going to need to talk to some people because you'll never forget yeah. that moment that happened. H how have you know. felt waking uh, up today? Look, to be honest, I did not sleep properly for some reason. Like, I was picturing that guy the whole night and I was dreaming Bondi Junction and everything. And I got about 6 o'clock and I got a phone call from Nine News. Um, they wanted to have an interview with me. Um, yeah, and still, like, you know, I'm not feeling 100%, especially my mental health. So I'm on my way now to go if I can grab my car from there. I'm not at home at the moment. <clears throat> well, we, we hope that um, you're able to essentially process this. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a pretty traumatic time for you. I mean, we appreciate your time today, but do, do reach out and make sure you talk to people about this because... It's something most people never go through. I'm sure there's, there's yeah. relief at surviving, but, you know, what an incredibly traumatic moment to see that man and think he's coming for you. So, um, yeah, like, honestly, sure I, can't, like, I can't forget his picture. Yeah. I cannot forget his yeah. picture because I saw him in my own eyes. That incident happened yeah. right in front of us. Yeah. I can only imagine. Hussaini, appreciate your time today. Thank you.